Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Alexis Batulis with Columbus, and welcome to our virtual workshop, Dashboard in a Day. We started the call by putting everyone on mute. So if you have any questions during today's workshop, instead of raising your hand, please use the control box on the upper right hand side of the screen to enter any questions that may come up. Our support team today is led by Cindy Pride, a BI implementation consultant at Columbus, who will be online to help answer your questions. We have a very large group today, so we will do our best to address your questions promptly and ask for your patience. If you have not yet downloaded the student zip file, please do so now using the link posted in the comment box. I'll enter that in here. Please copy and paste that link into your browser if you haven't already. If you received an error when attempting to download the zip file, please refer to our help sheet in the handout section. We recommend using two, we recommend using two displays if available to launch Power BI and help follow along during this training. We are recording today's session and we'll be sending a link to all attendees within 24 hours after this workshop along with a short survey. This will be a fast paced program. If you run into any difficulties or need to drop off the training for any reason, we recommend skipping one of the labs to briefly observe and pick up on the next lab. This also goes for anyone today who might be missing any of the system requirements and need more time to download the files. Again, please review the system requirements handout for more information. Now I'm excited to introduce your presenters today, Michael Sims, Practice Director for Data and Analytics, and Butch Smith, Business Consultant at Columbus. So without further ado, Butch, I'll hand it over to you. All right. Well, thanks everyone for uh, joining us today. My name is Butch Smith and I will be your guide through Power BI Dashboard in a Day. Um, I want to quickly go over the prerequisites that uh, you have all been emailed, especially paying attention to the uh, where you put the content. You need to store it in a dyad folder um, on the root of C. And this is important because the way Power BI pulls data into the Power BI desktop application is through these files. So if you have your files um, in straight in the dyad folder, then when we run through the labs, if you get behind on a lab and we start uh, the next lab, there are files that have already been completed for the previous lab, but those files are hard coded into that, that particular dyad folder for the dyad data. Um, today, this is agenda. It's it's a pretty tight agenda, and that's because we are taking a, a eight-hour class, and we're doing it online and compressing it down into a, a five-hour time frame. We have scheduled two breaks, um, but again, it's going to be approximate as uh, our, our time works and and we work through the various labs. So, dashboard in a day. Today's workshop is a hands-on workshop for business analysts, and we'll be covering the breadth of Power BI capabilities, but not every capability within Power BI. It's, it can be a highly simple or a highly complex application, and uh, we're gonna give you the, the overview today, and what we'll end up with is something that looks similar to what you see on the screen right now. So every industry is undergoing a fundamental transformation. In the future, all companies will be digital companies, not only building products, but services to capture new business opportunities and engage with customers differently to meet their evolving expectations. To disrupt and innovate, organizations must take on a strategy that connects their customers, employees, products, and operations as effectively as possible, streamlining their business so that customers have ideal experiences, employees are empowered to do their best, operations can ensure effectiveness and efficiency across the business and that the best product and services are being developed and delivered. Organizations have focused on these four organizations have focused on these four core areas for a long time and digital transformation is happening across all of these areas. If you ask people what is digital transformation? 
you'll get a different answer. So Microsoft created this framework called Digital Feedback Loop to highlight how digital transformation is enabled. And at the center is data. Data is coming out of everything. Every single product at this point is being wired up with telemetry and the ability to collect data. For example, my thermostat at my house knows when I'm changing my temperature. Every motor that's manufactured at this point is emitting telemetry. Every time I browse the web, there's telemetry being created. And so this torrent of information allows us to better understand our customers, our operations, and the use of our products and services. which then allows us to go mine for intelligence, predict what customers may need, understand when a piece of equipment is on its way to a challenging spot or to a failure before it gets there. Taking all of this information, these predictions, and then feeding that back into your business process, this is where the change is occurring. When it comes to analytic tools and solutions, it's important to know what's out there and leverage solutions that work with Power BI to support better and faster decision making. As such, we'd like to introduce you to the Microsoft Power Platform. This is a collection of SaaS services that enable users to do three key actions on data that help them drive the business. Power BI is providing the business intelligence part of the digital feedback loop. The next step is the action. Take action based on your data, drive data-driven decisions, use Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agent. Power Virtual Agent. Um, Power Platform enables everyone to be working together using your data to help everyone from the CEO to the frontline worker drive the business decision with data and it definitely enables innovation. So the way business intelligence is used in organizations has changed significantly over the years. One way of understanding these changes is to think of the three waves of BI. In the early days of BI, organizations would typically have a team or person holding all the requests for insights from the business. This model is not very scalable and it can take a long time for the answers to get back to the user. By the time it does, a new question probably has already come up. To solve for this lack of scalability and gap between BI team and end users, the second approach to BI was to get BI capabilities in the hands of analysts who understand the business and can support decisions with analytics. With Power BI, we want to enable everyone in the organization to analyze their data, ask the questions that will help them run their business better, and act based on the insights they find. Power BI allows you to bring data in from multiple sources. It helps transform and merge it into a data model and can provide insights into that data model. Power BI supports both on-premises and cloud data sources. There are more than 135 native data connectors. You can also write your custom connectors for your data. Power BI allows you to create an interactive report, supports data-driven decision-making, and you can aggregate multiple reports to a single dashboard in the Power BI service and share this to all the users with enterprise security. This helps in everyone making data-driven decisions using Power BI. The deliverables can be viewed on a variety of platforms. There are different ways to share the results, bringing the visuals to every person in your organization. We will explore in more details through the next few slides. So why Power BI? The Power BI Desktop Report Designer has endless possibilities using more than 135 cloud and on-prem data sources and 250 plus custom visualizations. In addition to design templates and data shaping transformation options, Power BI will help connecting, loading, transforming the data and creating reports, dashboards, applications, and visualizations. Real-time dashboards are available in Power BI service. You can design a real-time and interactive dashboard using tiles from the previously built and published reports. Real-time capabilities are available for several of the visuals and the different data sources. Um, Power BI service and desktop can answer natural language questions as well in English and Spanish. It also provides AI insights built into out-of-the-box visualizations like a Q&A or a decompression tree. Custom visuals created by partners and community and the community are available to be added to your report as well. The deliverables can be viewed on a variety of platforms. Power BI is integrating with Excel, PowerPoint, SharePoint, and Teams. Reports can be embedded in numerous platforms and data connectors can be used to connect the data um, to, or connect to the data that stores those platforms. Um, Power BI Desktop is free. You can create your own reports, breaking down the data silos in your organization and using multiple data sources. 
real-time dashboards, live 360 views of your data, as you can see on the screen here, we're getting telemetry from a um, factory machine and we're, be, we're able to real-time output that telemetry. Natural language queries allow you to ask a question. So you can see here, you can just type in the question and then um, you'll get, as a result, beautiful interactive visuals. Microsoft continues to find new ways to simplify how people analyze and gain insight from their data. Industry-leading features such as natural language query are one of those um, key features. Natural language query provides users with an easier way to interact with data, allowing them to type questions in natural language and receive answers in live visualizations. Custom visuals provide an insight into the context of your business. Again, there are more than 250 custom visuals that uh, you can go on to the uh, app source and download those custom visuals right within the Power BI desktop application. Full integration with Excel and Power BI can be explored in additional courses, but you can analyze in Excel. You can get Excel data into Power BI to create interactive reports. You can pin Excel reports in the Power BI dashboard. Um, you can export to PowerPoint, which enables your data insights to be part of your PowerPoint deck. And you can integrate with Teams. You can add Power BI reports into Teams, and you can make Power BI interactive part of your meeting and group of members within your team. Integration with SharePoint and the ability to embed Power BI um, there is another key feature. So Power BI adheres to international and regional compliance certi cert certifications and attestations, privacy and data protection policies and processes, data transfer and location policies, as well as providing robust security features and functionality built in. So as you can see here, Power BI is a magic quadrant leader in analytical analytics and BI platforms, according to Gartner's February 2020 Magic Quadrant Leaders Board. You can see Microsoft is, is definitely leading the way when it comes to analytics and BI platforms. Again, Microsoft is positioned as a leader, leader in the Forrester wave. So let's jump in real quick to a uh, Power BI demo so we can take a look at what Power BI will look like and what we're attempting to achieve. This demo, which you can see here, this is, this is what we're going to be building together today is this exact report. But I wanna give you a little bit of insight into what we're going to be doing and how it's going to work. So the first thing I wanna do is talk just a little bit about the, the data set that we're gonna be using. Um, we're going to be using the Van Arsdell data set, and Van Arsdell manufactures expensive electronic products that can be used for fun as well as work. They sell them directly to consumers nationwide in the U.S., as well as several other countries. Van Arsdell and its competitors have retained a third-party marketing company to collect and anonymize industry sales so that all participants can benchmark themselves. So we're gonna be comparing Van Arsdell's performance with that of some of their competitors, and in the process, try to figure out if any scenarios stand out. Based on the information, based on this information, executives can then make a, a decision um, about their business. So we're looking inside of Power BI Service right here, and we're looking at the report that we're going to build. And I have a couple of different tabs here. One is a market share, and one is a buy manufacturer. And these, these tabs on the left-hand side correspond to pages within the report. So the first thing we want to look at is it, we can see here in the map that the United States has a, a large amount of revenue. If I click on the United States bubble, we can see Van Arsdell market share is 42.87%. If I unclick, we can see that Van Arsdell's market share worldwide is 47. If we take a look at Japan, they're at 49%. If we take a look at um, Germany, they're at 64 percent. If we take a look at Australia, they're at 55 percent. So the U.S. has the largest dollar sales, and Van Arsdell's market share in the U.S. is 43 percent of that. So as we're looking at uh, Australia, we can see here there's, there's a pretty significant spike in Australian sales, and we kind of want to, I want to dive into that just a little bit deeper. So I'm going to go to the manufacturing page, by clicking on 
by manufacturer. And I want to make sure that I have Van Arsdell selected. So in this drop down, I'm choosing Van Arsdell as the manufacturer so I can take a deeper dive into Van Arsdell's sales. So we're looking here at, at Van Arsdell sales and I'm looking at the USA and just by clicking on it, I've now filtered everything else on the page so that I'm looking at just USA data. Um, USA through this time frame looks about um, kind of flat, not, not not anything great. If we look at Australia, we see a large bump between 2018 and 2019. If we take a look at Japan again, like we had on the other page, they're actually declining. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the Australia and into Australia and and what's going on there. So we've got our our large bump in the Australia. Um, from this time frame. Let's see if we can garner anything from the categories to uh, to see what's going on there. So we're on Australia and we're seeing our categories and I'm going to click on 2019 so that we're looking at just the 2019 data. And what I immediately see is that the extreme category under urban is showing 39% for 2019. If I look at 2018 data, um, extreme is is not the top one. If I look at 2017 data, we see again that it, that convenience is our top and extreme isn't. I can check other countries to see what's going on at, at the same time. So I'm still looking at my same set of categories, but now I'm looking at 2017 for Germany. I want to look at 2019 for Germany. And so now I'm looking at 2019 and the extreme category is really nothing there. Um, so if I look at the US as well for the same 2019, looking at the same categories, again, extreme isn't really, um, doesn't really factor in. So if I go back and I'm selected on just Australia, I, I wanna drill into 2019 and get a better idea of what could be happening here. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand the extreme category as well and see if there's any particular items that uh, can account for some of that differences. So I'm gonna click on uh, the Maximus UEO4 item. So now I'm looking at data for that year for just this one particular item and its sales in Australia. So let's see if we can dive a little deeper into that year. I've got everything selected that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drill down into the months of that year. I wanna see what's going on in just, oh, look at that. At the end of the year, in September and October, we see through November, we see a pretty substantial rise. I can then drill down further into that by looking at just a particular month. So I'm going to drill into September and we can see here's a pretty substantial increase at the end of September. I'm gonna go ahead and go back and look at October, doing the same thing by drilling into it. I've still got Australia selected. I've still got the one particular product selected. And I can see here that there's additional uh, an additional bump at the end of October. And so we've spent approximately five minutes going through this and we've determined that there is a significant bump in a particular time frame for a particular product within a particular country. And we just did that by looking at the graph and clicking where our interests may have gone. So this is what, this is the power that Power BI brings um, to you, to your business analyst side of things. You can you can very easily click through your data and you can view different anomalies or you can view um, what's happening with it in, in pretty short order. So I'm going to jump back over to the slide deck real quick. And so if if we want to deliver on this vision, the best place to start is the end user's needs. So it turns out that the end users need six things. They need access to data. They need the ability to easily connect to data that lives in different systems and locations. They need to be able to clean the data. The data does not usually come in the required form. Errors and inconsistencies can be found in the data. End users need an easy way to clean the data and model it in a format that is optimized for their reporting. 
Once the data is clean, we need to be able to mash the data together. We need to combine data from multiple data sources in order to produce the reports that, they need, that we need. So we need an easy way to connect data from multiple data sources and mash it together. Once the data is mashed together, we need to be able to explore it. Then once we do that, all the user needs uh, is an easy way to explore that data. So drill down, slice and dice, and find the insights and hidden trends. Once we've explored the data, we need to be able to visualize it. So we need to identify the insights. We need to be able to visualize that data so that it is easy to share those insights with other users. As we usually say, a picture is worth a thousand, year, a thousand words. So the, the final step of an end user need is to be able to share that data. So they need to be able to easily allow their coworkers and other people to um, see what they were able to see in the data. So once the data is shared with, with others, the same process starts again for that user, where he or she might want to add sources, look at the data from a different perspective, or ask new or different questions. So we're going to set, I want to set the stage for how the lab and the content sort of works together. The first lab is centered around access and pre preparing the data. Then we'll cover data modeling and exploration. And then after that, we'll look at the different ways we can visualize the data using Power BI on different platforms. And finally, in labs four and five, we'll review publishing, accessing, and building and sharing dashboards. So Power BI connects to a variety of data sources. It enable, enabling you to view and explore data from hybrid sources in a single location. So the Power BI Get Data feature lets you quickly and easily connect to all your data. This includes a range of both cloud sources, on-premises sources, and specific data files, from the SaaS solutions you already use to your organization's on-prem database. Many sources have been integrated with Power BI, connecting in minutes with pre-built dashboards and reports. For the first time, you can easily get a consolidated view of your data, no matter where that data actually lives. And then Power BI provides powerful capabilities that allow users to shape, transform, and clean the data for analysis. It's like I said before, it's rarely in the right format and a self-service business analyst tool must provide the flexibility to transform and clean data before it can be properly analyzed. Power BI provides these capabilities as an integrated part of the data preparation experience, enabling more flexibility and ultimately a faster experience for business analysts to work with data and build reports. Power BI Desktop enables extensive data analysis so that you can produce rich data models using formulas and relationships. It can automatically create a model simply by importing data. Um, it can detect relationships automatically, categorize data, and imply default summarizations. You can, uh, you can refine the model to enable more complex calculations. It can identify relationships between data sets from a variety of sources, creating relationships between tables manually or using auto-detect feature. Desktop's auto detect feature accelerates your analysis, and it, you can then go in and manually adjust relationship types one to one, many to one, many to uh, many to many, many to one, and cross filter data for specific insights. Um, it's a pretty powerful data cleaning tool, and um, it's a pretty easy process to learn and go through. So at this point, I would like to um, hand it over to Mike for a few words about analytics and BI digital strategy. Um, we would usually refer to that as a data journey. So as Butch was mentioning, uh, first off, thank you, Butch. Uh, very nice intro. Um, this is going to be a very quick demonstration about how we work with clients on our digital strategy, specifically around analytics and BI. All right, let's try this. There we go. All right, so as you guys probably know, reporting tools can really help to foster a data-driven culture. And what we've found, especially lately, is that business insights and then combining that with artificial intelligence and machine learning can really be a differentiator that leverages those business insights. The challenge that we're seeing is that all of the work that, to get all of this data together and, and as Butch was talking about cleaning it and, and modeling it properly, that is, that is probably the main challenge that a lot of companies are, are walking into. 
And the proposal that we have uh, worked with a variety of clients on is to provide a roadmap to enable this data-driven culture and to maximize the value of the data assets within the organization. So a few common challenges that we run into today is, for instance, um, data would reside in several different locations. You could have several different formats, and that makes it very difficult to see a complete picture of your business. A good example of this is that you might have an ERP system that's in Oracle, you might have a manufacturing engineering system that's in SQL Server or, or IBM DB2, and you might have IoT and a variety of other unformatted and semi-structured data sources. Which leads us to this multiple data source issue of where the data itself actually resides. You could have it in cloud solutions on premise, you could also have a hybrid solution. How do you get all of this data combined and how do you have it all um, you know, basically trying to move in the same direction and saying the same thing. A customer in Salesforce, for example, might be defined differently than a customer in your ERP system. The other thing that we're finding is that different users have vastly different roles with how they're using the data. And a lot of times they need minimum latency data or some, in some cases they might not need uh, data up to the minute like which was showing that, that telemetry uh, information and yesterday's data might be fine for them. But all of these things combined together present some, some challenges. And that challenge is really about digital transformation. What we found though is that digital transformation itself is really more dependent on adoption. We're pretty good at the deployment and the activation side, side of things. We're, we're good with getting data in a lot of cases and moving that into some type of a common repository. We're good at activating it because that's very much of a finite project responsibility. What we're finding is with the adoption and proficiency within the organization is once uh, IT or whoever is sponsoring these business intelligence projects is done and hands this over, is sometimes the business itself has a problem adopting and becoming proficient with what they're what they're utilizing. And a lot of these projects then um, they slow down or they don't they don't uh, get adopted as, as quickly as we need to. And that's really because these are very disruptive type of engagements. Um, and adoption itself is really dependent on people utilizing a solution on a regular basis. And proficiency is dependent on behavioral change within the organization. What Power BI is doing and what the Power Platform in general is doing is making these types of tools uh, readily available and democratizing data for the entire enterprise. One of the things that we discuss with our clients when we engage with them is their data journey. In other words, where are you right now on this scale in this graph and where do you want to be eventually? The way you read this chart is from the bottom left and you move to the top right. A lot of clients will say when we first talk to them, for instance, that they are in the statistical analysis or forecasting um, bubble of, of their data journey which is what we would call L5 and L6, um, basically start with L1 at the bottom and move to L8 at the top. When we get there and we start talking to them and, and look at their real data assets, they're really an L2, L3, in some cases L1, and, and once they see this chart and they start really doing some self-assessment, they realize well, they're not quite as advanced as they think they are. They're still using Excel to, to pull a lot of data together and, and building very intricate and, and um, sometimes unwieldy spread marks uh, and they're doing their forecasting out of those types of things. With this data journey, we can see a variety of things. We can help to roadmap where they would like to be in the future, and we can also show the disciplines that are required to get them there. So if you look at that horizontal partition, anything below in the lighter blue is what we would call traditional BI um, reporting and dashboard type of things, you know, very two-dimensional SSRS type of reporting, which is still very, very valuable, of course. To move into the upper levels um, towards optimization and predictive analytics, that's going to require a little bit more advanced analytics, and Power BI is bridging that gap. The services that we provide, from data management all the way up through analysis and reporting, leverage the Microsoft tool, tool set and the Microsoft best practice methodology to help clients get there. So our data journey adoption schedule is really pretty quick. Uh, we start with some workshops, envisioning workshops to see what the subject matter areas are, for instance, the data sources and so forth. We document all of these things and we agree upon 
um, you know, what we're going to target and what we're going to focus on as far as this engagement is concerned. We have follow-up discussions in order to make sure that expectations are appropriately set. Then we build out a plan, we build out the project, and we deploy. Now, with Power BI, what we're finding is, um, and Butch and Cindy have actually done a variety of these, is that we have built iterations into the project plans. Because many times, clients will say, well, I really like this data, but I want to add X, Y, and Z, and that X, Y, and Z can be a lot more letters. So it really requires, in, in some cases, going back and redesigning the dashboard or adding significant, uh, significantly to the reports and dashboards, maybe adding more tabs, slicers, visualizations, and so forth that you're going to see in the upcoming exercises. So building these iterations into our engagements helps the client because these requirements are very fluid and they do change. This is um, our service catalog, and I will tell you that we, we have a new one coming out, but it's pretty much um, you know 80% of what we have right now. And really what I would like to focus on is not necessarily the words at the top and the services, but more the technology landscape at the bottom, uh, or at least right now. And you can see that we have, in addition to the traditional SQL Server stack, we also have all of the cloud tools that we are we are leveraging including but definitely not limited to data lake spark uh, data factory data bricks we've done some python work we've done some r work um, but we are still very core sql server at, at our um, at our um, starting points now if you look across the top here the silos um, if you will of data management business consulting and advanced analytics all of those across the top you can see we have a variety of business consulting services that we can pull out and utilize depending on what the client engagement requires. So the stages of technology adoption that we've seen are awareness and really what do we want to do and, and how, how does the client need to solve this problem? You know, Again, keeping in mind that these requirements can and will change in the future. So build, how do we build this framework to support future requirements? Then we want to create momentum with the clients to understand their business and provide those solutions so that we can meet those, those ever-changing needs. Apply those services and technology landscapes that I just talked about to those needs. And if we need to, um, work with the client to determine, you know, hey, we have a gap here and how do, how do we fill that out? Enablement. And in this case, we want to increase the knowledge and provide support for our clients because we want them to be able to handle you know, whatever comes their way with these new tools and with this new technology that we're presenting to them. Uh, there may be times where they need to pull us back in to help, but our goal is to make our clients more enabled with these tool sets. And then also to help with adoption. What we've seen is that the culture change that's required in a lot of cases is um, sometimes the most difficult part of this. The technology can be adopted, we can go through and build out the projects and and deploy the end result and everybody's happy as far as what the spec specifications were but it doesn't get adopted because we have this one guy in engineering that's done things like this since 1986 and he's not going to give it up uh, so there's there's a variety of ways that that we work with clients to adopt and and we will continue to work with our clients and, and change that approach in order to meet those ever changing needs so internally with clients um, what we would like to have is someone that can help us guide the data conversation within the organization. And the way we do that is by helping them with a, you know, a data-driven approach, making them look at the business challenge or the problem that needs to be solved and realize that we can help them with data and there's a variety of uh, components to that data that we need to look at, whether that be master data management, uh, there's a scalability issue or data quality. There's a variety of different things that we will look at with that data-driven approach. Business value is what value will the customer and business actually generate from this business initiative? So if we're, for instance, doing a lift and shift from an older on-premises um, Oracle uh, Enterprise BI system and we want to move them into an Azure system, you know, what is the business value that that provides? We, you know, we can sunset that older system, which might be a little more expensive. We can put them into an evergreen cloud scenario where they don't have to worry about high availability and disaster recovery. There's a variety of things that we can show business value on. The data strategy, you know, how do we, this is getting a little more nuts and bolts and tactical. How do we collect and pre-process? What are the business rules? 
How do we protect and store? What is the security that's required around that? The objective function. What is the opportunity that can lead to greater insights? We might be working on a project, for instance, that is giving providing us sales and production information, and we realize that there is some some hidden insight in that data that we we didn't even anticipate. Um, so that objective function is, uh, you know, there's a potential learning engagement that can be that can be seen from that data collection and, and that data project. And the customer value proposition. Uh, what is the value for this initiative? to the customers themselves and how will this be better than what they have as far as you know we can maybe uh, move people that are supposed to be doing accounting work or supposed to be doing engineering work from cobbling data together to do these gigantic spreadsheets or these siloed reports and have them actually do what we hired them to do that's just one example so in order to leverage a best practice data strategy, there's really three areas that we want to start with, and that's clear strategy, we want to address the technical issue, and we want to plan. So for clear strategy, one of the, one of the most successful things that we found is we need to have an executive sponsor, preferably not in IT. Now, IT needs to be involved, obviously, but if we have an executive sponsor that's part of the business, that really helps us, especially with that adoption disruption piece of the um, piece of the puzzle that's later on down when we try to implement the project <clears throat> we want to have a clear strategy around business insight compliance security and data governance uh, a lot of times those things aren't talked about uh, security is probably the thing that that pops up most here uh, but when we're dealing with data governance and client and, and compliance we we really want to make sure that we're meeting the strategy of the company as they move forward and we want to understand our data scenarios. And this is where that iteration comes in because the data scenarios might change over time. So we want to have the, the flexibility that if the business comes to us and says, well, we really want to change this and this and this, and it's not a, a significant um, uh, structural change that we can do that very, very nimbly. Addressing the technical issues, we want to work on our data quality and our data availability. Mm -hmm. Having data in one location, one version of the truth, uh, is a huge initiative for a lot of clients, um, especially if they have multiple data assets. So pulling that into a data lake or some type of a structured system like a, a, an Elastic Pool in SQL or a, a Synapse instance so that Power BI can feed off of those, that usually helps to address those particular issues. The infrastructure issue does come up. Um, we've seen all three of, all three of these um, as far as cloud, on-prem, and a hybrid approach. Um, a lot of clients prefer when they're completely on-prem to do kind of a hybrid approach initially to get people used to the cloud, and then they will they will move to the cloud, um, and that's part of their roadmap. And then product gaps, and and a lot of times it's not necessarily only the product gaps, but it's the culture gap. Is is the culture of the company ready for business insights? Is it ready for artificial intelligence and machine learning? A lot of times people don't realize that they're actually further along than, than, than they think. Um, so having a, um, a demo or a discussion about this uh, really helps to, to figure out where they are. And then finally, we wanna plan appropriately. We wanna address our business challenges. We wanna build that roadmap out and we wanna work towards a, a best practice implementation. And our best practice implementation lines up pretty much with, with Microsoft's. And the reason that we do that is because since we are a Microsoft shop, for us to have a separate set of business practice, uh, best practices doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So we work with them on, on the best practices and we implement those. Okay, Butch. All right, thanks, Mike. Let me share my screen. Okay. 